Breaking is a personal journey, that transformer, something about it that just makes you feel invincible. It's not rocket science. It's rock it science. Just rock it. So in, in 77, I moved up one block. So I lived over there in a little tiny building, one bedroom, me and my, my two brothers. And my mom, she put a name on a lottery at about 74. She hit it, a lottery for an apartment. Yeah. And that apartment, that was it, second floor balcony. So that's where me and my brothers came with my mom. Three bedroom, two bath, I'm not lying to you. Second floor right so there, two seat. That was a major come up, huh? Big come up. Yeah. You know, and that this, was my bedroom. This, this building here? Yeah. The second floor, that's two seat. Moving into that building, I met a guy named Jeff Green, whose, whose name is Devious Doles, of course. Had a cousin from the Bronx named T, and he brought a cassette tape down, and I heard this cassette tape on this little radio, and heard this music that I, this, these guys rhyming, saying cool words, and with all this slang, and harmonizing, and, and this beats that were playing were like, it was like not, you couldn't hear too much instrumentation, you just heard the drums, basically. And this is it, this is the Rock City Park. None of these gates were here, none of this playground shit was here, it was chess tables. Yeah, I remember growing up too, watching all the, the early Rock City tapes. It was in that big part of the park right there. Yeah. And then if you see the movie Star Wars, that was done in the back, all the way in the back on the rubber, those old pictures of us yeah, on the rubber. Yeah. Yo, Lenny, come down to 98, 99th Street. To the park, to the old park, all right, yeah. Yeah, so let's walk back. Let's That's a crazy call right there. <laughs> bringing uh, Moy uptown, I had the opportunity to bring Lenny Len. Moy, nice to meet you. Big Lenny, what Lenny, up? Lenny, Lenny Len. Yeah, man. Crazy legs cousin. This is my boy, this is my brother right here. Yeah, he survived the test of time, and to be able to be with him, what is it, 40 years later, we're both very lucky to be here, you know what I mean? Yeah. To, to tell these stories, you know? This is the first part that I've seen a raw ass dark circle it was right here. Something was happening. I thought it was, you know, I wanted to know. I didn't know what was happening. I went and looked in and saw a guy do something on the floor, you know, that blew my mind. I was like, what is he doing? He took his leg and he bent his kneecap all the way sideways, looked at the dude and let it go <laughs> and stood up like really fast right in his oh, face. That was, a, that was a burn move. Burn, I, I got burned. I was like, what did I just <laughs> see? That's the house that Frosty flipped off of. He climbed up to the top and he did an aerial off that this shit. One? Flipped yeah. off the roof, did an aerial off the roof. That's just, yeah, that's just a little up, bit of, Frosty was not a well, joke. Yeah, he, he was wild like that, right? He I was mean, wild like that, but yeah. he was limber. Yeah. He, he was light and limber and bouncy. Yeah. yeah. So he had good shock, shock absorbers or something. You know what I'm saying? Because to flip off there, bro, you gotta be a little bit sick. It felt so empowering that it was our thing. You know, it was like our little, code, you know, way of communicating. And uh, I think all of us at the same time that started getting involved, you know, that's what we felt. You might have had an idea, you guys might have had an idea, but you never thought that'd be a multi-billion dollar no. industry, hip hop. I didn't know it was gonna go anywhere. I was just having fun. And it was like, <laughs> they'll give you $50 too? Yeah. Like, what are you, <laughs> you doing? movie theater was probably $2. 250 yeah, y'all make and it last. We go to the uh, movies. <laughs> Bunch of little rascals just going to the movies. <laughs> the movie Flashdance was kind of like where I said, oh shit, there's some real shit right here. Yeah. And then being on David Letterman, I was like, what the? F it's like, damn, this is not, you know, like, I would go after, after David Letterman, I went to, they paid me. I went to go buy my mother an Angora sweater because I wanted yeah. to buy her a sweater. Wow. I went on Broadway. The lady after thing said, I saw you last night on David. I said, get the. F <laughs> Blew my mind, B. It was just really intriguing to me to be using my body and have the ability to be a part of a movement of, of its kind that was raw and radical and taboo and at the same time be creative. Today's world of breaking is, revolves around like competition, like competitions are huge and mm -hmm. it's going here, it's going there, it's going to the Olympics and mm -hmm. all of the above, but a lot of people talk about the essence of breaking is going to be diluted when it hits all these bigger platforms, but the essence, it was always competitive. Mm -hmm. In That's a sense, true. I mean, That's you why didn't, it survived. Exactly, and you didn't. So you didn't. You didn't have these platforms be so massive and so big at the time. Mm -hmm. But the dance was always competitive, and like you said, that's what kept the dance alive, right? Mm -hmm. Even Len, you said it. Like even when you guys were amongst each other, you yeah. know, you guys had to be competitive mm -hmm. each, against each other because that's what made you that's guys it. better. If it's two people going each other, guess what? Someone's Somebody gonna. Lose. Yeah, mm -hmm. Somebody exactly. has to lose. Mm -hmm. You gotta have that mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's an edge to this. It's from the street. That edge has to be there. Look, man, that honesty of us as kids was important for the evolution. You suck. F you. You suck. You walk away pissed, but then you go train, 
because you, you felt that. You're like, what? And you're thinking, did I suck? You know, so, so it's like, that, that honesty is important. Yeah, maybe you don't like it, but it'll make you think. Yeah, you can check it out. Check it out. I ain't got no design marker, no design marker. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I don't make them no more. This is the original book you have, Wolfie? Yeah. Holy shit. Damn, that's crazy. Look at the Teach Wizard joints. For him to bring out a book of illustrations that are from that time period, it blew my mind. And when I saw him after all these years, he went home and got it. Said, yo, check this out. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, what, what, what? And then there's a page with everybody's name that hung out at that time. And I was like, come on, man, that's gold. Zephyr, Frosty Freeze. Wow. Like I said, always coming back here, I, I feel that energy. So it means a lot to me just to be here and know there's a chance any minute I could see one of my homeboys walk by and still say what's up, like we did in, in, in the park over there, you know what I mean? It's, that's, that's the beauty of it, you know, some of us keep it moving, but a lot of people still, you know, around. And it's always good to see someone and, and, and toss a few memories around about what we used to do, which will become one of the biggest things in the world, this whole culture of hip-hop. I was only relating it to what I saw, like on Beat Street, mm -hmm. flash dance mm -hmm. and all that, so I just thought it was just something to do and have fun and bug out. But when I saw you guys, talking to the locals in Brazil and talking to the locals in Japan and, and doing y'all's thing, I'm like, whoa, this is way bigger than I thought. That's what inspired me to not only get better for respect, but just to make, like, man, you know, maybe this can be something. 